Hey, Jared. Yeah. You know, my name is Under Sheriff J.T. Palmer. I mean, you met on the side of Highway 177 in about Singh Road at about 312 this morning, didn't we? Yes, sir. Okay. And at that time, you made a couple of statements to me when I put you down on the ground. And then after we got up, I read your rights to you, correct? Uh, you read my rights before I got up, sir. Okay. Before you got up off the ground? Yes, sir. But you did make a couple of statements yes, sir, I before did I read your rights sir. without me asking you anything? Yes, sir. Um, you just you told me uh, you was the guy that I was trying to find? Yes, sir. Okay. And then I read your rights to you? Yes, sir. And then rights was you had the right to remain silent? Then I had the right, sir. Okay. Anything you say, Kim, will be used in court? Yes, sir. You had the right to talk to an attorney, have him present while you being questioned? Yes, sir. And if you couldn't hire, for to hire one, one to be appointed to represent you? Yes, sir. And I asked you then if you wanted to talk to me? Yes, sir. And you agreed to talk? Uh, at the time, I said no, but didn't I? No. I read your rights to you. But uh, whenever you asked me if I wished to uh, talk with you about it... You uh, said you didn't know, and then you said... Yes, yes, and then you, yeah, that's right. And then you said, yes, I've already told you, so yes. I might as well. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, at that, and during that talk, do you remember what you told me after I read your Miranda warning to you? Uh, not word for word, but the effect, yes. Okay, and what do you remember telling me? Uh, in summation that I'm guilty, yes. Of what? Of murder. Okay, and who did you murder? Uh, Gennaro. Okay, and, and how did you murder him? With a gun. I shot him in the head twice. Okay. Uh, three shots were fired, one missed. And where did you shoot? Where was this? Did it, where did this happen at? Uh, around five miles north of Asher, Oklahoma, on our side road. Yeah, do you know what that side road's called? No, sir. Do you know what's on the corner of that side road? Uh, power uh, station, sir. Like a substation? A yeah. substation? Yes, sir. Okay. And does that road go all the way through? Uh, no, sir. It turns left. Okay. And did you have knowledge of this? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you from that area? Yes, sir. And your mom and dad's house is not too far from there? Uh, maybe uh, half a mile to uh, three quarters of a mile, sir. Okay. And can you get to your mom and dad's house by going down that road? Uh, yes, sir. Um, and you indicated to me you shot this guy while he was driving his pickup down the road? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And that's basically what you told me on the side of the road? In summation, yes, sir. And in fact, we did uh, find a, we already had found a pickup and there was a body next to it in a ditch? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Is that... Yes, sir. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. So you agree to talk to me again? Yes, sir. Okay. Jared, give me your full name. Jared Lindreth Wayne Murray. Okay. And what's your date of birth? Uh, July the 20th, 1994. Okay. And do you live with your mom and dad? Hmm? Do you stay with your mom and dad? Uh, no, I live at the dormitories in a college. Uh, before then, I lived with my grandparents in a town. In town of Asher? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you use for an address? Uh, the my parents' house. Yes. And what is that? Uh, Four hundred four zero zero five five Ingram Drive, uh, Asher, Oklahoma seven four eight two six. Ingram. Yes. I N G R A M. I M G. I N G, R A M. Okay. Um. And so you go to school at East Central. Yes, sir. And is this your first year of college? Yes, sir. So you're a freshman at East Central. Yes, sir. And you said you stayed in some dorms. Yes, sir. And what's the name of your dorm? Uh, Pasaki Dormitory, sir. Can you spell that for me. At P E S. A G I, I believe, sir. T E S A G I E. P E S. P E S. Ah. Uh, A G I. Okay. And that's an Ada. Yes, sir. Okay. And the young man that you stated to me that you shot twice in the head. Yes, sir. And his name? Do you know his full name? Uh, no, sir. I only know his first name. And his first name is what? Gennaro. 
I do not know how to spell that, but it is with a G. Okay. And do you go to school with him? Yes, sir. And do you stay in the same dorm? Uh, the same building, sir. Same building. And what's your dorm number? Uh, 463-D. Uh, 463-B? D. D? Yes, sir. And you know he is? Uh, no, but I know it's in E section. E section? And how do you know him? Uh, towards the beginning of the year we met in a mutual friend's room uh, playing video games, sir. Okay. And do you take any classes with him? Or? No, sir. Okay. So, you know him through a mutual friend and you guys dorm in the same dorm? Yes, sir. Different, different sections? Yes, sir. But it's literally right down the hall. Okay. And so do you spend quite a bit of time together? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Um, the pickup that was he was in tonight and you was in, was that his pickup or your pickup? I'm fairly sure it was his, sir. Okay, and you remember what kind of pickup that was? Uh, black. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay, you don't know? I don't know much about cars, okay. so. Uh, but single cab? Single cab, black, uh, okay. dent on the uh, passenger side. Okay. And can you go back and tell me how you two got hooked up tonight? Or uh, this, I mean, this is actually... Um, We're talking right now, we're at almost 6 o'clock in the morning, so can you go back and tell me when you guys got together? Uh, this would have been... Maybe around... <coughs> maybe around 9 o'clock yesterday evening. So on the 5th? Yes. Uh, um, maybe it was closer to 10. Okay, 9 to 10. And how did you guys hook up? Uh, I went down to his dorm room and asked if I could be given a ride to Walmart in exchange for $20 gas money. Okay. And did he agree to that? Yes, sir. Okay. And did he, in fact, take you to Walmart? Yes, sir. We got in his pickup truck and he drove me to Walmart. And so you're talking about the Walmart Nader? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's a couple miles from the school? Uh, 2.2, uh, no, 1.7 miles, sir. 1.7 miles. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, so he took you to Walmart? Yes, sir. And did you both go in? No, we did not go in, sir. Okay, and why not? We pulled into the parking lot, then I pulled the uh, weapon on him and demanded that he take me to Asher, Oklahoma, sir. Okay, and why did all of a sudden did you decide that you needed to go to Asher? because I was planning to take him out into the country and kill him. Okay. So, when you got him at the dorm, was your intention never to go to Walmart? Yes, sir. You was, in fact, was you at that point already in your mind was going to take him and kill him? Yes, sir. Um, had he done something to you? That no, sir. Okay. So you just... Can you kind of tell me when you made this decision that you were going to take him and kill him, why? Uh, I made the decision three days prior to the incident. Uh, attempted it two days prior to the incident, but he was not in his room, and then did so today as he was in his room. Okay. So you've been, you've been planning this for two days? Uh, two weeks, yes. Two weeks. But not with a selected individual, no. Okay. And when did you get to the point where you knew it was going to be him? That was three days prior to the incident. And why him? Uh, all the kids in college here, why, why him? I believed that he would have had the least impact, sir. Impact of on what? Uh, I believed he didn't have many friends, or many close friends, I should rephrase. And as his, <clears throat> as he is going missing, his absence would be less notable. Okay, so what about if tomorrow at school nobody would have thought anything of it? Uh, that was the plan, sir, yes. Okay. And so why did you choose to take him to Asher to kill him? When uh, my plan was for after uh, my killing him, I was going to head north towards Canada. And Asher was further north than Ada, so... Okay. Uh, that and uh, I know the surrounding terrain and I knew a good spot. Uh, I didn't have that spot planned in particular. If I had planned that far ahead, I would have had a grave dug. But I knew a general area. Okay. 
So you brought him to that area because you knew that area because he was raised there? Yes, sir. And that's the road that you would travel going back and forth to your mom and dad's house? Uh, no, sir. I would travel the road uh, further to the south of it, just the road one south to it. That's the road I would travel going to my mother's house from the school uh, on my bus route, sir. Okay, but what I'm saying, you were familiar with that road? Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. And where it would go to? Um, yes, sir. Not much traffic on that road at this time. But yes, sir. I mean, uh, the only people that go on that road are those that live on that road, sir. And you knew that? Yes, sir. Okay. So when you pulled the gun on him at Walmart in the parking lot, yes, sir. Um, what did you tell him? I told him to take me data, uh, Asher. Asher. And did he say anything? Uh, he panicked. Uh, went to pull out his phone. I yanked the phone out of his hand, and then he panicked some more. Kept telling me not to kill him. To make him feel more comfortable, I unloaded the clip, unloaded the bullet from the chamber, handed them over to him, and that eased his nerves a little. Then I pulled a second clip out of my pocket and set it on my lap. Okay. And, and you drove him to, and he, so he drove you? Yes, sir. And did you have any conversation between Ada and uh, Asher? The entire time was a conversation, sir. And was it basically, what, can you tell, tell me what that conversation was? Uh, about from Ada to halfway to Asher, it was just my trying to reaffirm him that I wasn't going to kill him to calm his nerves. And then from that point on, we was talking on our upbringings, our uh, past, our family histories, uh, things of more philosophical nature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. And so did he say anything when you had him to pull off of the main highway onto this dirt road? No, sir. Okay. Uh, before this time, I had uh, pulled out his phone and uh, pulled up his GPS and showed him where I lived to make him feel more comfortable, sir. Okay. And so when you turn west off of 177 and there's, we've already talked about this, there's a substation there. Uh, did you... We didn't pull onto that road, sir. We pulled onto the road to the south of it, drove past Turkey Hill one road, turned left, uh, went to around where the Bowes lived, made another left, uh, past Woodhaven Lake Estates, went straight. And uh, then went down that road from the other direction. So you came in from the west side of where the pickup's at? West heading east, yes. Okay. And so you're headed east on what is known as Substation Road, which is the road where the pickup yes, sir. is at now. Yes, sir. Um, so you're heading east and he's driving. Yes, sir. And you're on the passenger side. He's got some bullets that you gave him? He had a clip in one round, yes. Okay. And where was it at? Uh, in his left hand, sir. Okay. And you had a gun? Yes, sir. And what kind of gun was uh, it? Springfield Armory XD-40 Smith & Wesson 40 caliber. Okay. And you had the gun and another magazine, but you didn't have the magazine in the gun? I did not have the magazine in the gun. Every five to ten minutes he had me uh, put my finger in the uh, hole where the clip goes and uh, show that the round, uh, it wasn't chambered. Okay. And so you're driving east, and so I guess at some point, did you decide it was, now was the time? Yes, sir. Okay, and what happened? Uh, I loaded the gun quickly, chambered the round quickly, uh, shot once, missed, shot a second time, hit, jumped out of the car, went around, he was driving 10 to 15 miles an hour, so it was rather slow. Uh, ran around the hood of the car, and, and of course it was slow when he wasn't purposefully driving. Uh, tried to pull him out, couldn't get him out until he already had hit the tree. Pulled him out there, dumped him into the... Uh, no, before I dumped him into the ditch, I heard him uh, gurgling. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a physiological or physical process after death, but uh, I thought that he might have still lived through that somehow, because he was gurgling, so I shot him again and then shoved him down in the ditch. I then got his phone. Look at hang on, let's back up just a second. Yes, sir. Um, you fired the first round. Yes, sir. And you missed. Yes, sir. Do you know where that round hit? Uh, I believe it hit the top of the door, but it might have hit the window. It did the window bust? The window did bust, sir, but I don't remember if that was the first or the second round. Okay. So you, you fired once and missed. Yes, sir. And you fired a second round. Yes, sir. And did you hit him then? Yes, sir. And you hit him in the head? In the side of the head, yes, sir. Okay, so it would have been his right hand? It was around here, sir the right hand side of his head or yes, sir. somewhere by the ear. Yes, sir. And he was, he kind of started veering off the road? To the uh, left, sir. Okay. 
And that's when you got out and ran around? Yes, sir. And you opened the door? Yes, sir. And you tried to pull him out? Yes, sir. And so when you shot, and he was still gur gurgling? Yes, sir. So was he setting up when you shot him that had it again? No, sir. He was lying down on the ground. So you pulled him out of the truck? And just threw him on the ground, and then I heard him gurgling, so I shot him a second time. And where did you hit him the second time? Uh, I'm not certain, but I believe the head as well. Okay, the front, back, side? Uh, I believe it was the same side as before. Same side as before? Yes, sir. So you, you think you hit him twice, or you know you know you've hit him, in fact, once in the head? Yes, sir. And then the second round is probably in the head area, too? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you rode him down the ditch? Yes, sir. And what did you do then? I uh, grabbed his phone from inside the vehicle. I was going to put it on the ground and uh, shoot it as well. But uh, I have a bit of night blindness and didn't see the steepness of the hill where it started to veer down. Mm -hmm. So when I threw it down, it slid down the hill and landed a uh, screen side down. So I wasn't able to find its location. Okay. So his phone is somewhere around his body? Uh, yes, it should be. Okay. It might be underneath his body. Okay. And did you... Do something with the body after that? Uh, yes, sir. I repositioned it and then I uh, tried to cover it, uh, admittedly not well, with uh, leaves, dirts, and a uh, stick. Okay. A stick? Yes, sir. There was a stick on the side of the hill. I just grabbed everything on the side of the hill and pushed it on top of them. Okay. Now, when you say a stick, I, and I was at the scene. I went down there, and you know that. Yes, sir. Um, we actually brought you back down there. And had you set in the car down there, correct? Mm -hmm. And there is a stick, oh, it's about three foot long, about an inch, inch and a half in diameter. Yes, sir. It's right across the body, but there's a whole bunch of blood on it. Is there any particular reason that stick? It had blood on it? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be because I rolled his body on, on top of it, because if it was on the side of the hill, his body would have crossed over it. Okay. Uh, I couldn't think of any reason in particular, though. Okay, so you didn't hit him with a stick or do anything with him with a stick? No, sir. Okay, so that stick just ended up on top of him? Yes, sir. So it's possible he could have rolled him over on it, and then when you was covering him up, that stick just ended up on top of the body? It ended up on top of him because okay. of the way I covered up. Okay. Him up, yeah. And so, after you got the body covered up, what did you do then? I uh, headed back to the truck and uh, tried to get it unstuck. So you put it in reverse and tried to... And then I uh, drive and tried to, and it, it wasn't going. So uh, after that, I... So when you say it wasn't going, it was because it was stuck? Uh, I believe one of the wheels was off the ground, and it wasn't making traction. Okay. And so you could get the truck out. So what did you do then? I uh, looked to the left, and uh, from the headlights, I saw that I could still see his own shirt, so I covered him up better. And uh, as I was finishing that, I saw the headlights from a car pulling over the uh, hill. So I went down and... Which, uh, which way was it coming from? It was uh, heading e uh, west from the east side, okay. so from the highway. Huh. And uh, he was slowing down already, so I just came out as quickly as I could from behind the truck and uh, plied him down by uh, waving my hands. And uh, he asked what was going on. I told him that I had a uh, drowsed. Uh, dozed off and uh, veered off the road and uh, couldn't get my uh, truck unstuck. Then uh, he was, uh, I think he, uh, I don't think he knew exactly what happened, but I don't, I think he knew I did something, maybe stealing, I don't know. Uh, because like you said, the, no one travels down that road. Um, did you know him? No, sir, I did not know him. Okay. But since no one travels down that road and he most likely lived in that area, he knew that I didn't. Okay. So, most likely, he uh, was suspicious just from that fact alone, because okay. I had no business being on that road. But uh, he agreed to give me a ride to uh, Asher, nonetheless. Uh, more specifically, he didn't agree to that until his phone didn't work. Uh, we pulled up to about, about the highway, then he uh, dialed a number for me. Uh, I gave him a fake number, that way it wouldn't answer, and if it did answer, then I could just make something up. Uh, whenever it didn't answer, uh, it was a phone that was out of service, uh, he agreed to take me into Asher so I could uh, get my cellular phone, I don't have a cellular phone, to uh, call someone that I knew that could get me out. Okay. And what did he take you to in Asher? Uh, my grandparents' house. Okay. And what is your grandparents' name? Uh, Ethel, uh, I don't know if it's Long Lodge or Roger Canal. Okay. And 
do you take you and what and what do you know their address in Asher? Uh, 306 East Sulphur Street. Okay. And that's where he took you to? Yes, sir. Okay. And you got out? Yes, sir. Okay. And what did you do then? I went into the house. I had a Coca-Cola. I called my roommate from college and told him that I had an accident and wondered if he could uh, either get me out of the ditch or knew anyone that could get me out of the ditch. And what's your roommate's name? Uh, Shane Schroth. Okay. Then, uh... Does he have a cell phone? Yes, sir. And do you know that number? Uh, not off the top of my head, sir, but if I had a phone, I could tell you. Uh, it's like a... One... I know. All right, I can tell you now. One four zero five six nine four zero three five nine. Six nine four. Zero three five nine. And what's his name again? Shane Schroth. And he goes to school there. Yes, he also graduated from Asher yeah. with uh, the class. With your, you, you now we you talked before, and you did actually graduate from Asher. Yes, sir. Okay. But you would have graduated with him. Yes, sir. Okay. And what's your friend's name? Uh, Schroth, S-C-H-R-O-T-H. Okay, so he knew you from Asher? Yes. Okay. And we were roommates also in college yeah. because uh, we were fairly good friends. Okay, so you guys in the same dorm, same room? Mm, yes. Okay. And so you told him you were stuck? Yes, I told him that I'd ran my car off the ditch and asked if he knew anyone that could uh, get me out. Okay. Do you own a car? No, sir. Did he not know this? Uh, he didn't ask, sir. Okay. And what did he tell you? He uh, said he would try to call his uh, mother to see if his father could do it for me. And uh, they were asleep, so there was no answer. So uh, at that point, I decided I should go off on my own. Yeah. And uh, I got that can of WD-40 and was uh, going... Where did you get this can of WD-40 at? I uh, stole it from his parents. Okay. Let's back up just a second. Yes, sir. Okay, because you said you was at your grandparents. Yes, sir. Okay, how did you get to his parents' house? Uh, he was on the other side of Asher. I walked. Okay, when you say the other side of Asher, help me out. East of Asher, West Asher, North, or? South Asher. Okay, south of, Asher, south of the quick stops? No, it's in the town, just on the south side. Okay, you don't know their address? No, sir. Okay, so you walked after, <laughs> I'm just trying to make understand this, okay? Yes, sir. So you called him from your grandparents' house? Yes, sir. And then he tried to call his parents? Yes, sir. And no answer? No answer, sir. So you got your grandparents' house? Yes, sir. And you walked to his mom and dad's house? Yes, sir. And about how far is that from your grandparents' house? Not far at all. It's uh, maybe eight to nine blocks. I don't know my which that okay. And you walked to their house? Yes, sir. And did you knock on the door? Or? I just got the can of WD-40. And where was it at? Outside, sir. On porch or? Uh, they live in a trailer house, sir. It was to the right of their entering way. Just sitting on the ground? Or? Uh, sitting on top of a milk crate. Okay, so, so it, but it was in the yard. Yes, sir. You didn't sir. get out of the vehicle or not? Yes, sir. Okay. And so, now why did you get the WD-40? Uh, WD-40 is a solvent. It would uh, help degrade the uh, oils from my fingers and uh, get rid of my uh, fingerprints, sir. Okay, so you're going to take this kind of WD-40 and go back to the crime scene and use WD-40 on the pickup? Yes, sir. To try to get rid of your fingerprints? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you do that? Uh, no, sir. When I was on my way back, as opposed to going down the road directly to it, I cut through a forest area uh, there by an abandoned uh, trailer house. And uh, as I was entering the uh, general area of uh, the crime scene, I heard, uh, I believe it was an elderly gentleman cough. I'm not sure who, I'm not sure what. I just left. Because, well, around that area, the man who gave me a ride into town was an elderly gentleman. I concluded he might have went back and uh, the headlights and the brake lights were still on. I thought he might have uh, went to turn them off uh, so my battery wouldn't die. And then he saw the, uh, at least the blood, probably the body, though the body wasn't well hidden at all. Okay. So That's the conclusion I reached anyways. You, you was in the woods? Yes, sir. And so you don't really know who it was? Uh, I just heard an elderly gentleman cough. Could you see the pickup? No, sir. Okay. So you couldn't you couldn't see the pickup? No, sir. And so you'd been on, were you on the south side of the road in the woods? Yes, sir. And so, but you never could see the pickup again or know who was there? No, sir. Okay. So what did you do then? I uh, headed back uh, 
east instead of south, took a different route to get out of the wooded area, uh, ran into a barbed wire fence, jumped the barbed wire fence, uh, headed south along another barbed wire fence I found next to the highway. Well, you couldn't see the highway, but you could easily hear it, and I could see the substation from there pretty clearly. Uh, headed south along that, came across another barbed wire fence, jumped it, and uh, then headed to where I started out at, at that abandoned trailer house there. Then I uh, walked away. I headed north. Did the abandoned trailer house, is it south of the substation? Yes, it's south of the substation. About how far? Uh, maybe 100 yards. And you know what side of the road is on? Uh, west side. West side. Okay. It's uh, up the ways a little. It's in a... The, you know how trailer houses out in the country, they'll have driveways that mm -hmm. lead to them. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see it from the highway or not, okay. but... And the driveway's run down, I happen to know no one lives there, so I figured that was the perfect uh, vantage point to get to the crime scene again. Okay. So, did you get back on the highway? Yes, sir. And which way did you go? North, sir. And what were your intentions? Uh, you walking north? Canada, sir. You were going to Canada? Yes, sir. Okay. I had hoped that uh, by determining that I was heading south, you uh, went to Asher, you would have known my grandparents' house, and I was hoping that... Uh, my name would probably show up somewhere in the course of this little thing. I didn't expect it to be found so quickly. Uh, Why didn't you think it would be found so quickly? Uh, I didn't think someone would drive down that road. Uh, in my original plan, okay. uh, I gave myself maybe six to eight hours to uh, get out of the area. But uh, since it was found so quickly, uh, at least I believed so at the time, I didn't want to revise the plan because I had headed south originally going into town. Okay. And uh, I was hoping you were think that I was heading towards Mexico is it's much closer and <coughs> probably easier to get past the border. Okay, and so you were walking north on 177? Yes, sir. And what side of the road was you on? I was on the right side of the road, sir. Okay, so if you're east going side. east side, and you was walking? Yes, sir. And what happened then? Uh, I had tried hitchhiking uh, part of, uh, most of the way because the only way this was going to work, uh, factoring in uh, my belief that y'all found the crime scene is if someone were to give me a ride there and then. Uh, however, that didn't happen. Uh, most of the people were truckers, so they just kept driving. They had a place to go. And uh, then whenever your patrol car uh, was pulling up behind me, I didn't know it was a patrol car. I stuck my thumb out, and you was there for the rest. And that's when I, um, that's when me and you first came in contact. Right? Yes, sir. And you advised them to get on the ground, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> and that's when I, I had you put your hands behind your back. Yes, sir. And then when I approached you, I asked you, for my safety and your safety, did you have a gun? Yes, sir. And you said no. Yes, sir. And you remember what else you said? Uh, I might have mentioned the ammunition in my left pocket, sir. Yes, sir. And then what else? Uh, I'm the one you're looking for. And at that point, I told you to be quiet. Uh, and so I got you read your rights to you. Oh, uh, is that correct? I'm not sure, but if you're saying it's correct, well, no. Yes, sir. Do you remember that conversation that uh, when you said? Uh, no, sir. I said, "Well, hang on just a second. Ah, uh, yeah, you did say that. Yes, sir. So I did yes, read sir. your rights to you. Yes, sir. And I read your rights to you at that point. Yes, sir. Okay. I wasn't aware you was telling me to be quiet. I thought you was just saying I need to read your rights. But I, I told you, you do remember me saying be quiet for a second. Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, hold Some, on a something second. to that effect, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, okay, Jared, um, where's, and we've talked about this, and you told me the gun, you have the gun in the pickup. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and me and you've talked. And, and I've told you that, you know, you've already told us about the homicide. Yes, sir. And you, you told us about shooting them. Yes, sir. The gun's not in the truck. It was in the truck, sir. And so I need to know where that gun's at. When I left the scene, it was in the truck, sir. It was still in the truck. It and was still in the truck, sir. Where was it at in the truck? It was, uh, I believe it was on the center console, but it's possible it could have been between the driver's seat and the center console. Okay, because the center console is pushed up. It's not down. Uh, I don't remember that. Okay. Well, you kept saying it was on the center console. To be on the center console, the center console would have to be in the down position, correct? Yes, sir. The center console is up. So was it up or down when you was there? I think it was down, sir. Okay. 
So, but your intentions, can I ask you why you agree with the gun there if you just killed somebody and you were trying uh, to get to Canada? Because that uh, man pulled up too quickly, sir. Okay. And was that your gun? Uh, no, sir. And where did you get that gun from? I stole it two weeks ago from a man named Daniel Davis, uh, 217 North Division Street. Now, where's Division Street? Uh, it's the, uh, if you're going down 018 and entering what, Asher. What town is it in? Asher, Obama. And his name's Daniel Davis? Yes. And how did you steal it from his house? Uh, I went into his house. Uh, he, his family and my family are on good terms. I just walked in the door and uh, went back to his mother's room and told her that I had a video game to return to uh, Daniel. Then I went into Daniel's room, put a video game that I brought with me as a way to get into the door, and got the gun. Okay. And so you, was it in a box or was it? Uh, yes, sir. It was in a uh, case. Okay. And where's the case at? It's still at his house, sir. Okay. So you took the gun out of the case? I took the gun in two clips, sir. Okay. Uh, and all the clips. And where's there? So there's just two? Yes, sir. And where's there ammunition in them? Uh, yes, sir. There was 12 rounds in each clip. Uh, since I fired three rounds from that one clip, that means there's nine rounds in it, should be. And uh, the other clip uh, had 11 rounds in it because one was chambered, and the other round was I unchambered it and handed it to him. Okay. Now, when I brought you in here and we was uncuffing you, uh, was just checking the pockets of your jackets to make sure you didn't have any weapons in your pockets, correct? Yes, sir. And I pulled out this can of WD-40 out of your um, right coat pocket. Yes, sir. And in your left coat pocket, there is a purple crown rural bag. Yes, sir. And I took that out of your pocket. Yes, sir. And can you tell me what's in here? Uh, Smith & Wesson 40 caliber round, sir. And was it part of the rounds that you stole the guns? Uh, no, sir. I bought those two or three days later off of a friend of mine, sir. Just that, that many rounds? Uh, that plus what was in the clip, sir. So there was 12 and 12, 24, plus what's ever in there. Okay, no, you, but you said that there was already, the magazines already had bullets in them. No, sir, I loaded them with the bullet, uh, ammunition I bought, sir. Okay, so when you stowed the gun in the magazines, there was no bullets with it? No bullets were in it, sir. Okay, so you, what was in the two magazines? Nothing, sir. No. Oh, uh, as for the ammunition, yes, sir. And what's in here? You, you bought off of a friend? Yes, sir. And you know his name? Uh, not off the top of my head, sir. Does he go to college? No, sir. It's, I call him a friend, but he's just a guy. Okay. And where's he from? Uh, Ada, sir. Okay. Do you know how to get a hold of him, or? Uh, no, sir. Okay. It's a guy I know through a guy. I just got the word out I was looking for some ammunition, and then okay. a friend of mine sold it to me, so. Do you know how many rounds are in here? Uh, no, sir. I believe there is anywhere between three to six, though. Okay, so it'd be... Without pulling them out, there's somewhere between six, three to six rounds of 40 caliber ammunition, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And your intentions is the gun, when you got her out in Dasher after you shot um, this young man, that the gun was still in the truck? Yes, sir. And with the magazines? Yes, sir. Well, uh, one of the magazines. Uh, as he was holding one of the other magazine, I believe it fell out of the truck whenever I pushed him out. Mm -hmm. He, I didn't see it in the floorboard before I left because I was trying to gather it all up. But uh, I think he might still have it in his left hand. I know he was holding it in his left. Okay, hand. but but at the crime scene, there were two magazines there should have been the yes. gun, the magazine that was in the gun. Yes. The one round that you handed him. Yes. And then the full magazine. Yes. That he hit. So we're talking about. A total of how many rounds? You said there was, was both of them had 12 in it? Yes, sir. So there, we should have, we should have, you fired three rounds, correct? Yes, sir. So there should be 21 rounds and two magazines there. And a gun. Uh, yes, sir. Plus, well, there, yes, sir. 21 okay. rounds and yeah. two magazines and a gun. Okay. All right. Um, and also, in your pocket, um, there was a, Debit card, MasterCard, has the name Jared Murphy. Murray. Murray. And that's you, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is yours? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Jared, I want to ask you to sit here for just a second, and I'll be right back, okay? Yes, sir.
Uh, okay, Jared, I've got a couple other things. I really need to sign down. Right? Yes, sir. Um, but I, I agree with you when you're being honest with me. I really do. You told me stuff that, that, that I have no qualms about what you tell me except for a couple of things. I know for a fact you didn't get the WD-40 from the front yard. You're right. I plan on keeping him out of this, but I did go into his house. He did give it to me, and yeah. And when you say who, and when you say him, who? You uh, the parent of the friend that I called. Shane's. Shane's father. His stepfather. Yes. And you know his name? Uh, Michael Norris. Okay. And what did you tell Michael? I uh, told him about what had happened and asked for his opinion on the next course of uh, action. Okay, you mean you saw what happened, what do you mean? The murder. I told him about So you told, you told Shane's father about the murder you just did? Not the specifics, but the general picture, yes. Okay, can you, you remember what you told him? Not exactly, but I mean, I didn't tell him I fired three shots, missed one shot him in the head, pulled, not all that. I just said that I got a truck, I killed the guy for it, it's in a ditch. Okay. Did you tell him how you did it? Uh, I don't remember, but I might have. Okay. And this is really important, and I want you to really think about this, because you said you're trying to keep him out of trouble. Yes, sir. And I don't know more than you think I know. Yes, sir. So, I'm still got the gun. Yes, sir. It's not in the truck. It was when I left the scene. Mm -hmm. That was the whole point of him taking me back so I could get it. So he took you back to the scene? Uh, no, you said no, you walked? no. Uh, he drove me to the abandoned house that I spoke of, yes. Okay, so Mr. Norris gave you the account of WD-40? Yes, sir. And I believe he probably got that from his bathroom of his house. Uh, I'm not aware of where he got it, but yeah. if that's where he says, then yeah. Okay. And so he drove you from Asher back to... The area the, of the scene. Just south of where you would turn on substation road? Yes, sir. And that's where the abandoned trailer house is on the west side. Yes, sir. And so you got out of the car and walked up through the abandoned trailer house, down through the woods. Yes, sir. And then that's when you heard somebody cough? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there is a note wrote on a piece of paper, on a, like a business card on the passenger side window, stuck on the pickup. The window's up, and there's a note stuck in there. It says, come to the house at the end of the road. Did you write that? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. You didn't write that? No, sir. You have any idea how that note could have got there? No, sir. I don't think anything like that was there whenever I left. Okay. So is it possibility that the gentleman? Uh, yes. When I was on the way back into Asher, he had told me that some thieves stole about $1,000 worth of guns of his and that he was looking for them, and if he found them, he would kill them dead on the side of the road. Then I said $1,000 was a fair amount of money, and he said it didn't matter if it was 50 he doesn't like thieves. Okay. Um, so is it possible that he could have, on his way home, he could have stopped and wrote that note? Yes, that's a possibility. I won't deny that. Like I said, I thought it might have been uh, him that called the police. Uh, I still don't know if it was or not, but I thought it might have been him. He went to turn my lights off and then saw the blood and then called, but... Uh, if he did write that note, then I don't think he would have called the police. Okay. Uh, I just want to go over a couple of points with you, and then we're going to take another break, okay? Yes, sir. Um, and you started this out that um, you've actually had this on your mind for about three weeks. Yes, sir. And you just didn't know who. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, oh, then. Well, I had a general idea of the area, but that was picked out about a week ago, sir. Yeah. You know, was that picked out because of just being familiar with where the yes, surroundings? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And so, let's go back to our victim, the young man that you killed. Gennaro. Um, you just basically picked him out because you thought that you nobody would miss him, if I understood what you... Uh, in general, yes, sir. Okay. And you told me that on the way to, you guys talked from Ada to Asher. Yes, sir. About your upbringings. Yes, sir. Um, was your upbringing any different from his? Yes, sir. 
And what was the difference between your upbringing and his? Hmm. Nothing major. I mean, we didn't talk on the topic of upbringings for very long. He just said that he was uh, always fat and overweight and got made fun of it, so he had confidence issues. And then I said I never, well, I had that problem, but that problem stopped in about the fifth grade, so, yeah. And why did it stop? Uh, the bullies that picked on me, I beat them up. Okay. And was that a dasher? Yes. Okay. So you basically beat them up, not because you just wanted to beat them up, but because they was making fun of you? I had to stop them from making fun okay. of me, yes. Okay. I can understand that. Um, uh, I mean, have you done any other thing that's been violent? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the mutual friend that I talked about that I know him through, uh, his name is Wyatt Freeman. He lives across the hall from me. I don't know his room number. It's directly across the hall, though. Uh, maybe a month, a month and a half into college, uh, we had hung out almost every night, play video games. It was all fun and games, you know. And uh, I was talking to him, and then the topic of fighting was brought up. And then he said, if I got you in a chokehold, you would tap out. And I said, I'm not going to tap out. And then he got me in a chokehold, and I was knocked unconscious. And when I woke up, uh, everyone in the room was laughing at me. And then he said that there was no way I was knocked unconscious in that short an amount of time. And then I punched him in the face. And then he pushed me away and told me to get out of his room. Then I spat in his face and left his room. And then he came to my room, and I uh, had a flashlight that I, I had dropped out of my pocket, and. Uh, was holding it and said, this is your flashlight, I went to reach for it. He pulled me into the hallway and was going to beat me for it. And then I told him that I was going to let him beat me, and then whenever they came to break it up, I'd be the one with all the injuries and it would be his fault. Okay. And then uh, the East Central University police responded to that. Okay. And his first name is what? Uh, Wyatt. What? I'm not quite sure how to spell that. Uh, Freeman is his last. Okay. Um, Jeremy, I want to ask you just point blank. Because, I mean, you you sit here and confess to pretty much anything. In my mind, and I think you might agree with me, just cold brotherly killed a young man tonight. Yes, sir. Last night. Have you ever killed anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Have you ever thought of it? Uh, more myself than anyone else, sir. Okay. And when's the last time you thought about killing yourself? Three weeks ago, sir. Okay. And what was going on three weeks ago? Mm. Nothing in particular. Uh, my grandfather died recently, but that's not related to it. Before his death, I had similar thoughts, almost as frequently. Your grandfather is the same grandfather that that you cut the ride to back to his house tonight, or a different one? Uh, yes, my grandparents' house. He lived there with my grandmother. Yes. Okay, so your grandfather's dead. Yes, sir. And so your grandmother is by herself. Uh, she had a friend over, but yeah. But okay. Um, okay. Well, let me let me ask you this, Garrett. Are you are you taking any medications for any mental illness? No, sir. Have you ever? No, sir. Uh, do you take drugs? No, sir. Have you ever taken drugs? Uh, I smoked marijuana in my mid to early teenage years. When's the last time you smoked marijuana? <laughs> maybe six years ago, maybe five. You ever done any other type of drugs? No, sir. Um, you're not on any medication? No, sir. Just an abuterol inhaler for asthma, sir. You do have asthma? Yes, sir. Um, so, um, when you, let's go back to three weeks ago when you, 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 you started praying that you was going to kill somebody. Yes, sir. And you just didn't know who or when. Yes, sir. What made last night the time and who? Uh, I kind of understand who. As I stated earlier, uh. It wasn't necessarily last night. I made the decision to do it, and who, three days ago, and I tried. N no, maybe two. Tuesday. I made the decision Tuesday. Uh, th this whole saying, days ago, because it's a different day than it was yesterday. Uh, it was Tuesday that I made the decision it should be him. Uh, he wasn't in his dorm. I didn't try again. No. Maybe I did try again the day after. I don't remember the days anymore. It was Tuesday I made up my mind, though, on who it was, and I tried that night. Okay. And... I guess I'm having a hard time understanding what you got out of it. Can you can you, can you help me? I don't 
don't really get anything out of it. I mean, but why not? If you wouldn't want to get some food or something, why did you do it? I guess is what I'm asking. If I'm pressed to answer, I'll say it's to prove the strength of my resolve. But that's only if I'm pressed to answer. I'm not pressing you. I'm just trying to understand. Then I don't know why. Okay. So it just... Popped in my head. And popped in your head. And you yes, did. sir. Okay. But it's never popped in your head before? Uh, not other people, that, sir, no. That you've, that you, you've never killed before? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Animals? No, sir. I've never hunted. I know how to hunt. I know how to make a bone arrow. I know how to uh, field dress animals and whatnot, but I've never hunted before. No. Okay. And when we was talking before, you indicated to me you did not graduate from... After. No, sir. I fucked up. Okay. So, when you say fucked up, was that because you just couldn't do it or you just... I didn't want to do my didn't homework. Want to. The teachers at the school, as well as all faculty, admitted that I was the smartest person there. They knew I could do the work. I didn't see the point of doing it if they already know, and everyone knows that I could do it. Well, that was my next question, because it don't make sense somebody that would front out of school would be at East Central. Uh, that summer, uh, and I've been going to an organization called Upper Bound Math and Science mm -hmm. uh, since maybe three years ago. Uh, and would you do any other brown and stuff in East Central? Yes, that's uh. So they have it in. They have both upper bound and upper bound math and science. It's obviously what you're saying. Central State science. College also does the same thing, so. Yeah. But I don't think you can get the math and science at Seminole State. I uh, think that's just all. It's, it's just upper bound, yeah. Okay. So you've been going to East Central upper bound? Uh, for three years, yes, sir. Yeah. So. And uh. What kind of grades are you making in college right now? Uh, I believe I filled everything except for choices and wellness, sir. Is, or you found everything but choice? Yes, sir. Yeah. And why is that? Mm. Laziness, I would suppose, sir. Okay. Didn't feel like going to classes. I mean, if I was already up in the central area to eat a meal, I'd go to classes. Because it's not like I have a problem going to classes. It's from the dorms to the central area, I was too lazy to travel that distance. Not because you couldn't do the work? Not because I couldn't do the work. I was passing most of my classes before then. And what was your ambitions or your dreams to be? Uh, I had hoped to uh, become a chemist for the Department of Defense. Yeah. Kind of hard to do in Canada. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. this and you can answer if you want. I just, I'm having a hard time. Yes, sir. Do you feel any remorse? I'm sad that I got caught so quickly. But that's almost lessened by being caught by someone who has a sheriff on their jacket, so... But for killing them, no. Okay, so it, it makes you feel better that you know, somebody had a sheriff on their jacket that arrested you? Yes, sir. Opposed to what? A deputy or someone like that, sir? Okay, well, I'm not the sheriff. I'm aware of that. Uh, I'm the under sheriff. The yeah. uh, person driving me up here told me that. Yeah. But still, it's... So it makes you feel better that you got caught by somebody up in rank than somebody under Yes, sir. You. But my question again is, do you have any remorse? No, sir. Okay. All right. Well, I'm here for a minute, okay? Yes, sir. since we got to the crime scene. You what? My left thumb's been numb since we got to the crime scene. I do I don't know. I figured when the cuffs came off, feelings would return to it, but in this area, it's still numb. I probably just need to work it. Well, I, I have been. Yeah, right. Have you ever been cuffed before? No, sir. Okay, so you ain't never been in trouble? No, sir. <laughs> so if I run a record on you, I'm not going to find anything on you? You might find that assault from a couple months ago, but that'd be it. Okay, and that was when you and the other guy Dorm got into it. Yes, sir. About the choco. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I tell you, since you go to college, you probably have a computer, correct? I have a laptop, sir. Okay. And it's probably at your dorm? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Um, and I know we've talked about this kind of in general about you didn't know who it was going to be yes, or sir. when it was going to be, but you kind of knew where. Yes, sir. And then you tried this Tuesday night. Yes, sir. And then he wasn't there, so he was home. This is now Friday morning, so it had been Thursday night. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and I've talked to you some about was there going to be others? I am. And you know, and you you made a statement earlier that you was happy that you got caught by somebody in the Veronica statute, the yes, sheriff's sir. office. So then you understand that I'm going to do my job thorough. Yes, sir. And I understand that completely. And that means that I'm going to end up getting a search warrant for your computer. Yes, sir. I understand that. And so, if there's it, I'm on this. It, Searching your computer, we you know, we're going to find anything where you had any um, ideals of wanting to do a mass shooting at a school? No, sir. Or you was going to kill anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Why would you want me to believe that this was just going to be a one-time thing? Since you planned this for three weeks, and if by Tuesday night you knew who, and you knew when, but it failed. Yes, sir. Tell me why I should believe you that there just was going to be one person that was going to suffer from your consequences of killing. You have no reason to believe me, sir. I agree, but so, but you're trying to tell me that just, you're just going to do it one time and that was going to be the end of it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to find anything on your computer that's going to be, or when I go to college, when myself and this team from the DA's office goes to the campus and we talk to everybody that you're associated with in the dorms. Um, nobody's going to tell us that, well, he's talked about the school shooting or killing no, other sir. people. I'm not going to find that? No, sir. Okay. So. Uh, that said, I have been asked by people, uh, including at Asher School, if I, I'm a murderer or ever plan on it, but I've never planned on it since three weeks ago, and I've never killed anyone, so the answer's always been no. I've never been sure if it was jokingly or seriously, that said. Okay. I guess I'm just having a real hard time understanding why. Why him? Well... If it was a random person, there's the possibility he could have uh, children or something of that nature. Uh, if it was someone else up there, they have a lot more friends, they're a lot more social. So. So. To kind of just by his quota status of not really having many friends or, or being social, it was a good victim. His presence would be less noticed, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, that said, he did have a girlfriend and uh, some friends. Yeah. You don't think his girlfriend would have missed him? Uh, I wasn't aware of his girlfriend until uh, tonight, sir. Oh, so he told you before you killed him? Uh, no, uh, the entire way down there, uh, I haven't had any phone at Walmart. The entire way down there, uh, she was texting him, so I was texting what he told me to text back. Okay, so there was a conversation between um, his girlfriend and actually you, but you was texting what he wanted. Yes. Okay. Okay. You don't think she's going to be upset, heartbroken? I think she will be, sir. How did that make you feel? No difference, sir.
Hey, Jerry, one more question, just this ain't got nothing to do with this. Do you know the young man that you shot cell phone number? No, sir. Yeah. Okay. And so, but when he fell in the ditch and you dropped the phone, it fell down in the ditch by the body? Uh, I believe so, sir. Yeah, can you tell what kind of phone it was? An iPhone, sir. It had a uh, outside casing around it, but not a too thick of one. Okay. What color was it? Black. Okay. 
Can you sit around and face down? That's why you. I don't want to work with anyone. Find it, yes, sir.
some questions about this paperwork. About what? Uh, I didn't know what to put under investigator, date, uh, earned, hair color, or the bottom line. Oh, okay. That's no big deal. I'll throw that in. Well, I didn't even know if that was hair color. I thought it might be hair length, hair color, both. I didn't know. Mm. Thank you. 